already, y'all. <laughs> hey, y'all. Uh, hey, everybody. It has been a very eventful evening for us. We spent the last two hours or so. Yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> two hours trying to connect and, you know, uh, shoot some videos. And apparently, we're doing one tonight and not the rest. Um, but... <laughs> This video is technically a, a video response uh, to Cricket Song of Lunar Wisdom, um, who did a, a very touching video on how or why, well, why she dismantled her coven. Um, it was very personal. It was very, uh, it hit, you know, very close to home for both Melissa and I. Um, and so we decided we would talk a little bit about coven work and, and why it's a, uh, it's not for everyone and, and it's super challenging um, and our sort of take on the whole process because we are in a very similar situation. Miss Melissa, uh, what say you? Well, you know, honestly, I really, um, it's like you said, her video was very, it hit very close to home for us and not just because Deviant Witchery has gone from four to two but also because we have had a coven before, he, uh, Michael and I. And we've touched on it just a little bit. We have we don't really talk about it, just a whole bunch, you know, the past of the past and all that. But, you know, it was the, a lot of the things she described, especially the part where she was talking about how she was feeding this coven, like, all of her energy. And she was the only one feeding the coven all of her energy. She was the only one that put the coven... Um, above everything else, and to me that hit so hard um, in the feels, <laughs> you know, because that was our situation um, back when we started our, and it was an online coven, and it seemed like Michael and I were putting, we put that above everything, you know, even our own families really and fed it so much energy and so much energy and just more and more and more and then we realized we were exhausting ourselves because no one else was was putting the energy in it that we were and as disappointing as it was I still feel like we both learned a lot from it there were good aspects about it there were there were not so great aspects about it and there were plain shitty aspects of it um, but it did, whenever she started talking about that, I was like, man, I could just feel that, what she felt. I could feel that, that giving of so much energy, <clears throat> and later on it kind of feels like it was all for naught. I mean, not completely, you know, and, and, it, and even in her, her video, she talks about how she, she is left the experience with a lot of good memories and things like that, but <clears throat> I know that frustration. And it, it is it is a tough thing. <laughs> it's a tough thing to go through. It it really is, and, and absolutely, um, it requires a lot of work. And, and sometimes it's the interesting thing about coven work. A lot of people think it's just like you're getting together. Well, not a lot, but there's some people who think, "Oh my God, y'all just scared myself." I thought there was a spider. Not a spider. It's just like this. Shit. <laughs> myself. I'm okay now. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, it, the, a coven is almost very deeper than it's deeper than family, really, because you become um, well. You normally you interact and you share and you you share on a very different level, on a very spiritual level. You connect with energy. You practice. You do all these other things that open yourselves up to each other, you know, you, you become more. And so sometimes you share these, these aspects and these parts of yourself, uh, yourselves, anyways, um, with, with your other people in your group that you don't share with the outside world. You, you don't share that because when you practice with someone, uh, whether it be in person or through distance, um, you witness a very interesting, uh, uh, part of them. You you become a very interesting part of them. And, and so um, you 
create a very unique bond and you become very vulnerable in a sense to to the energies uh, within your circle. So uh, when you find out that you, as inspired as you are, as, as uh, intent and intense as you are, um, other people start to show their true colors. You know, personalities start to, to come forth more. Um, and then you, and as much as you start putting in the work and as, as much as that's, you know, taken off, uh, you start to notice that there are weaker links. And it's not just like the weaker links are, um, they're weaker in a certain area, they're not doing the work they're not inspired as as you are they their priority is not the the group mind and so you see them faltering you see them not caring and you try again like uh like cricket song did uh you put more energy into it so you feed it because you're passionate about it and you you want this to work but you're not really doing anyone a favor because you're lifting them up and they're not following through they're not doing anything for you. They're not doing anything for the group. And so I'm rambling y'all. So this is gonna be like a rambly video, but whatever. Um, but when you find out that that's the case, it hurts. It hurts on a very, um, a very deep level, depending on how long you invested and the connections you made with these people. Um, it hurts because you thought you had something good. And it turns out that it's really, uh, it really was based on falsehoods, on, on lies, on the lack of integrity, um, because people can't hack it. And it's a lot of work, y'all. It's it's a lot of work. But when uh, when you express forming a group, that this is going to be a lot of work, and this is what is expected of you, and this is what you need to do. When you're very clear as to what is going to happen, and everyone says they're a part of it, they're on the same page, and then you find out that that's just not the case. Um, I don't know, it, it's, it's a challenging. So when I heard, you know, uh, when, when Sherry expressed herself, I was just like, oh, I know, I know that, that, that pain, really. Yeah, and you know, it's, to me, it's really, um... Especially in some of the situa in, in a situation that Michael and I found ourselves in because it was very unique. It was an online coven. And y'all, this was back in the day before Facebook was really a thing. Like MySpace was still the thing. <laughs> oh. Facebook might have been just now a thing. But um you know, we had to go through a lot of work just to get everybody online in the right chat rooms and stuff to build what we wanted to do. And all of our work is in the astral and on the astral plane. And whenever you set a coven up that way, you can't help but merge your energies with the people that you are working with. And even more so in a way than if you were in a physical coven. Not to say that you don't do that in a physical coven, because you do. You know, in a, in a, in a um, real life, not that online is in real life, but you know what I mean. Face-to-face -face coven. Right. Um, because you do. You definitely do. And not to put one above the other or anything like that. It's just very different, because that's what you're always experiencing, is that very spiritual connection where your energies are merging. And so, you know, I mean, you pretty much know right away who's doing the work and who's not, just in, in, in those interactions. And it's, it makes it, it's like there's two levels going on. You know they're not doing the work, but you want to give them the chance. And then after a while, you wonder if you're just trying to see something that's not there. And right. so you're kind of disappointed on two levels whenever it doesn't work out. But still, before, before it gets to that point, before it decides, you know, it comes to the point where you have to, to take everything down and, and, dis and uh, uh, dissolve the coven, you, it, there's a lot of beautiful things that transpire. And you really feel, you don't just know people on a physical surface level, you've gotten to know these people on a soul deep level. 
So whenever you have to dissolve that Kevin, and I would think it, it's the same, you know, whether it's it's a online Kevin or in real life Kevin, but <clears throat> you know, whenever you dissolve that Kevin, it's like you have to do so much unwinding of all these cords of all these people that you've allowed to be literally inside your soul. Right. And it is that to me it is honestly not just the mo one of the more beautiful aspects of coven work in general, no matter what kind of coven it is, but it's also a very challenging time. It's it's hard and it's painful because, you know, it, it can be more personal than sex in many ways as far as, as combining those energies and so when you have to, it's kind of like breaking up a relationship. It's, it's like dissolving a relationship. A relationship you've put a lot of energy and time into so there's this hole there now. And right. you know, it's a process. It is a process. But even so, I know personally, and I, I know Michael feels the same way, I would definitely join a coven again and to me that is one thing that kind of agitates me whenever I hear people like well I had this bad experience in this circle this one time and I'm a solitary from now on they're not all the same and everything has a beginning and ending right you now right. everything has some end better than others right um, but it's still a wonderful an enlightening experience that I really feel like everyone should try more than once, not just once and be like, nah, it's not for me. And maybe it's not for you. Not everyone's meant to work in a group, for sure. But to me, it's something that I wouldn't just give up on. It's kind of like going out and having a crappy date and then deciding never to date ever again. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, I think um, not that group work is set up, you know, to do this, but it's very healing because a lot of us, you know, we grow up and we're taught not to trust people. We're taught, um, we're taught to be so guarded and, and defensive that the, the, the concept of group work is, is off-putting because that means we have to get in a group and we have to sort of learn to trust one another and let go and they need to have our back. Like, you know, um, you become very vulnerable not powerless because vulner vulnerability is not a, a meaning of powerless. A lot of people think when you're vulnerable, you're, you have no power. No, uh, when you're vulnerable, you actually have quite, you have tremendous power. Um, uh, that word's funny. Um, anyways, uh, so it's, it's that um, ability to, to learn to, to become vulnerable and let go and release and, and learn to trust other people and other energies and other individuals um, when you become uh, part of a group, it's a very uh, therapeutic process because it has that uh, nature where your energy um, connects with with so many people. And you learn more about who you are. You learn more about yourself because when you connect with someone else's energy, when you connect with another person, you can see yourself through their eyes, through their energy, because the more you practice, um, the, the more you interact with them, you practice with them, and, and you raise energy, and you, you see each other from a psychic level, um, you see yourself through the group mind. You see yourself through, through you know, so much more. And so that's a, a powerful experience. You know, you learn so much about who you are as an individual, as well as who you are as a whole, um, as a group. Uh, from that process and that brings about major life changes and not a lot of people are prepared for that not a lot of people are ready for that um, it's a lot of work it so, is yeah. it is and I don't think people really understand how much work is involved in in participating in a Kevin whether you are the high priestess or the high priest or whether you're involved in a coven that doesn't have a designated leader, that leader changes, you know, monthly or however, however it is. Regardless of your position in a coven, you still have a lot of work to put into it. And I think a lot of people kind of go into it with an idea that 
you don't have to work as hard because you have many bodies sharing the workload than you do in your solitary practice. And to me, it has never played out that way. It's always been the opposite. Um, because it's completely different. You're in a group dynamic, and if one person is slacking off, it affects the whole group. Right. So, to think, you know, it's not going to be easier than your solitary practice. It's going to be, in fact, more challenging. In your solitary practice, the only person you have to argue with is you. You know, the only person you're going to disagree with is you. So, in a coven setting, you have all these different minds and all these different mindsets, and no, no one really practices exactly the same. And in a coven, you're kind of made to practice the same. And that can be a, a challenge for some. And, and for me, it, it it's always been a challenge, but it's been a fun challenge. It hasn't been something I've dreaded because I, my mind has opened up to all these new perspectives. And even whenever I'm in a situation where I might not necessarily think that that is something I would do on my own, it's still a joy to be able to experience it in general and, and with a group. You know, magic is very different with a group. It is. And that's, uh, I guess that's like, uh, if you are going to join or looking to join a group, a coven, a circle, or if you're looking to create one, that's something that needs to be expressed um, very importantly. Like, it just needs to be, uh, the work is not easy. And you can't, it, you, I think a lot of people go into it thinking that someone else is going to tell them what to do. And so they kind of go into it thinking that they're going to be able to be lazy because someone else is going to be there to guide them. Someone else is going to be there to, to tell them what is required of them, what they're going to do, blah, 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 blah. Um, which to an extent might happen, but in, in all actuality and truth is when you join a group, you kind of have to bring your own self into it and you need to do like be self-sufficient because you're not going to necessarily be told every little thing and how to do it and practically you want someone to do it for you no you have to go in to this work knowing that you're going to have to do quite a bit like a lot um and not it's not just going to be you though so that's the beauty of it is like that is expected from each individual. You need to bring your A game. You need to like go in there and just like 110%, you have to go above and beyond and you have to be willing to to engage and learn and to just um, become more. Uh, but it's required of you to, to really um, invest into the practice, into the work with other people. Uh, and it's not, it's not easy y'all, it's just not easy. Right, it's not, and you know, and not to say that there weren't days that I didn't feel like I was 100% or 110% or shit, sometimes not even 50% there, you know, we all have outside influences and stuff like that, but what was amazing to me about a, a coven or circle experience, a group experience, is I could go in feeling like shit, and just like, I've had this horrible day. I don't even think I want to be here. And before the end of, of the meet, I would feel awesome. It's all, you know, because as much as I felt like crap and walking in, you know, walking in there, it was like everyone else's energy fueled and, you know, rejuvenated mine. So it was, it was exhilarating, you know, to know that, Pretty much every single time I felt horrible or, God, I really am not in the mood to do this or whatever, that by the end of it, I felt better. I felt right. you know, excited to, to share my craft with others. And honestly, y'all, especially from a person where, I mean, I live in redneck hell, so there's not a lot of witches around here. And so when you get to experience a group like that, it's just, it's, it's a whole nother thing. It's a whole different level of what you're used to, and, it, and it's super exciting. So, you know, I think a lot of people um, have a hard time balancing out the 
solitary version versus the group version. And they try to keep those walls up and still kind of be their own person. But And not to say that you're just not your own person when you're in a group and that you're all of a sudden not an individual. You are. But you just are able to open yourself up to be more than an individual. And I think a lot of people have problems with that. Just opening themselves up to being more than... Well, yeah, and... Uh, what did I want to say, y'all? Uh, that's kind of like the whole... That's one of the main points of being a part of a group is when you're not feeling 110%, when you're feeling like 50, 30, 20, whatever, but you still put in the effort, your priority is your group, you still put in the effort to be there, when you link up and you sync with, with the other individuals, um, their energy flows through you, the group energy flows through you, and so it uplifts you, it, it restores the, the depletion, it restores that, and so you remember why you are there to do the work that you're, you're there to do. You, you get reminded of your, your purpose, you get reminded of why, um, why you are who you are. There's so many different things that process through you um, in that moment of connection when you raise that energy and you you be a part of something more than just yourself. So it almost it allows you to heal. It allows you to let go, release your your physical body, and other energy flows through you. And it it does its healing. It reminds you of exactly where you're supposed to be. And then um, other things happen. You know, outside influences, blah blah. But you're you're aligned. It's almost like an alignment where you are in alignment with with everything, and you're uh, recharged and ready to to tackle the the next step. Um, but that's kind of like the whole purpose of group work is to uh, remember community, to honor uh, the the group purpose, your mission, uh, your goals. Uh, to help each other thrive, to uplift each other, to support each other. It's more than just like, um, you know, a little meet and greet. It's work. It's hard work. It's, uh, it's coming together to support again. It's coming together to learn, to educate, to, to integrate with the group mind. It's coming together to, to uh, really engage and um, challenge each other because personalities will clash. You will learn so much about personality. You'll learn so much about psychology just from the interaction between different personalities, different energies, and you know different situations that come up. And you grow, you grow, grow, grow um, as an individual as well as a witch when you have this opportunity. And it's a beautiful thing. It's not something, so many people think it's such a negative thing and it's a, it's a bad experience. You know, we've been burned. You know, Melissa and I have been been hurt a lot um, going through the, the creation process of the coven as well as the nurturing of it, as well as, you know, uplifting and supporting the individuals who are partaking in it as well as having to let go of people, having to release them because of certain things happening, as well as eventually coming to a place where this is taking too much from us. And as well, as, as much as we are committed to this, it was created by more than just us, even though we were the dominant influences, we have to take it down. We have to say goodbye. We have to let go. We have to release this. So we have to destroy the the atmosphere that we created together. We had to take our energy. We had to take that the the work we did, the the meetings that we had, the interactions that we did, the psychic engagement, the the education that we did, everything that we shared. We had to take all of that and we had to obliterate it. Like it's taking all of that, taking energy and just like shredding I'm, it. Yeah. And which it, is like a kind of horrible <laughs> experience. I mean, I learned something from it, but shit, that takes a lot out of you and it's really eye opening, you know? It is, and it just like honestly, just thinking about it, like it's kind of making me emotional because I remember, and it's, and it's, it, it was hard, 
it was very, very hard. I mean, challenging does not even cover it. It was hard. And I don't know. To me, it's it, it was it was a learning experience, you know. And we learned a lot of from it. And you know, we kind of just picked ourselves up and were like, okay, let's let's we'll figure out something later. We'll figure out more later on. But I will also, you know, to me, the things besides yes, the ending of it really does stick out in my mind, you know, because that was a big ordeal. But um, and it took a lot of energy and it took a lot of of um, you know hurt and pain to be able to rip apart things that you literally gave birth to, pretty much. Right. Um, but to me, on a personal level, while the coven was functioning and while it was at its like peak. And even even the the creation process, all of that, it changed not just the uh, interaction I have with other witches and learning how to work in a group, but individually my own magic and my solitary practice changed and became something so much more. You know. I, I yeah I I totally resonate with that and I agree and um, the interesting thing about what you expressed there is uh, I think not that long after I spent a lot of time um, healing I spent a lot of time healing and, and trying to to be a better person and to be happier and I spent a lot of time figuring out why I hurt and then that when it wasn't just because of, of you know the coven the group it you know personal shit I spent a lot of time after that process after that like destruction the birthing of the destruction of it after that I spent a lot of time again um, looking deep within myself so that really helped me figure out uh, more about who I was but it also inspired me uh, to really give a damn about community, to really care about connection, to care about people. You know, a lot of the, that might not be something that's very um, well known about me, but I absolutely care. Like, I care a lot. I care a lot about the craft. I care a lot about the people that I surround myself with. I care about everyone who is working to be better, to do better, and who's learning their craft. Um, that experience it really, um, it, it planted that seed that I care about who we connect with, about other witches, about other people of power, um, uh, and helping and nurturing and supporting and, and uh, doing the best that I can to be a part of that and to make sure that I can offer something to others who may be struggling like I was. And, you know, they don't know how to heal or they don't know this or that, but that whole experience really um, it it set the it set that course uh, for me actually. So it's interesting to contemplate. It is because you know it, I, it, I think it affects it affects everyone um, differently. For me, uh, in many ways, I kind of felt less naive and also a little bit more thick-skinned and maybe a little bit more cautious um, because when you go through something like that you see things about people that you just sometimes it's like wow just sort of kicks you in the teeth like whoa you know I did not see that coming and not to say that that doesn't still happen right it does but I feel like it doesn't happen as much, or at least not on that same level. Because to me, that that was the challenging part for me. I mean, a little, a lot of it was, but that was really super. I think that was my really first big experience as far as in the witch witch community, having being just like, so they aren't doing what they say they're doing. Oh my God, you know, and it's as naive as that sounds. But it's the truth. I was just totally like taken aback. I couldn't figure out like how someone could talk so excitedly about witchcraft but literally not be doing anything. 
you know? Right, and right. It, it just, it was like a slap in the face. I was like, what? That happens? <laughs> so, um, I, I feel like as, as much as that did hurt, it also helped. And, and, and in some ways, maybe made me a little bit more cynical. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was like a conduit, you know, a conduit for uh, uh, <laughs> healing, a, con a very therapeutic process. Right. right, yes, exactly, because, you know, you need to have a little bit of cynicism. You need to be question questioning, you know, and, and that's what I wasn't doing. I wasn't questioning enough. And and so whenever that happened, I, I realized, like, okay, let's not take everything at face value. You really need to... To question and and that helps all of us grow as a community, not just myself, but everyone. So uh, to me, that was really enlightening. And as much as you know, that may be kind of painful to go through. I'm glad that I went through that. You know. Well, absolutely. You know, we have we have built a, a actually pretty awesome relationship. You know, not we had a relationship before that, but that actually took it to a different level. So you, it helped you and I to really connect. And um, there's so many blessings because of it. And that's kind of the thing that needs to be expressed as well. You know, once you're a part of a group, um, you know, people come and go just because they leave doesn't mean that they're forever gone. And just because they leave doesn't mean that it was a negative process you know people have to do their own um their own healing their own transitioning they have to do what's right for them and sometimes uh when you're part of a group uh as the group grows and as it you know shifts and forms and it changes to to a whole new level as you have your experiences you create something more and more um, as it grows, it might not be where one individual or two individuals or three, whatever, it might not be where they're headed at that moment. It might be either progressing too fast or not fast enough. Um, it just might not be the right fit. And so they have to step down or they have to be cast out. Um, it, it just depends. But um, it's not like a drama thing. It's not a negative thing always. It's a very uh, liberating thing for everyone involved because everyone has to do what is best and, and in their best interest. Um, so that's something to also consider is like people come and go, but it's not a bad thing. It's necessary. Right. Yes, exactly. You know, you think about all those um, feel good quotes of, you know, people are either meant to be in your life or they're meant to be a lesson in your life. And, and either way, that's still a positive you know, and, and you learn and you take away something from that, no matter what it is. You know, if any of the old members of, of our first coven were to suddenly, you know, get in contact with me through social media, I would be thrilled to hear from them. As much as, as you know, it, I may not have enjoyed some of the things that happened in that Kevin experience, I, still, it would be, I would not be like, oh, well, I'm never just talking to you again because that one time. Right. You know, because it, it was a learning experience and, and several years have passed and we're all different now and we needed that. We needed that experience in order to grow. Right. And, and to be the people we are now. Absolutely. Um, so let's come to a close so we don't make this like a hour-long video. Um, so is there anything else that you like to express or discuss a little bit before we, as we go? Um, uh, only that, you know, if you have the opportunity and you actually feel like you're ready to really work at, at being a part of something like a coven or a circle, then I highly recommend it. Go in with an open mind. You know, try to remove all the pre- uh, you know, um, judgmental things that you may have heard, or even if you've had that experience before, you know, try to try to take that out of your mind and go in with an open mind and and really ready to embrace the experience. I I think that everyone should have that experience, honestly, more than once. Right. Absolutely. Um, and that's uh. 
powerful words, y'all, and that's true. You know, group work is very uh, rewarding. It's very um, exciting and adventurous and very liberating. It's a it's a very fun experience. So, like Melissa said, if you have the opportunity to to experience that, do so. Do so with a very with great discernment, um, and know that it's going to require a lot of work. Uh, maybe we could, if y'all would be interested, maybe we could start doing like a coven series and maybe Miss uh, Sherry, Miss Cricket Song would be interested in being a participant in that. Yeah, just sort of a practical information on covens. Yeah, so maybe how to form, you know, how to form a coven and all different things that, that go into creating, maintaining and uh, nurturing. Um, but yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed this uh, little video, this experience. If you would like us to comment more and talk more about coven work, um, please let us know. Uh, but we look forward to talking with y'all soon. Bye.